Nick Gretto and Charlie Gross to share a little bit about the amazing work you do with Sound of Savings. Would you be glad enough to just share with our listeners and watchers a little bit about what you all do? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, I'll, I'll kick it off with just a little bit of background on how we came about. We're still a relatively new organization. And then we'll go into the, like a little bit of detail about, you know, what the things that we've done and, and are continuing to do. But yeah, I, I, I found it Sounds of Saving going on about two and a half years ago um, after um, I was at a gala at an event for a friend of a friend who had taken his, taken his own life and um, sort of found myself just taking, taking it back and wanting to, you know, uh, feeling like um, I needed to do something. And I kind of removed myself from the, from the pack and, and um, yeah, just like, what can I do about this, this, this uh, situation that seems to be getting worse and um, kind of on the spot, um, you know, started thinking about how music had, played a part in my life. Um, grew up in the suburbs of Philadelphia and, and uh, therapy wasn't something that we, we necessarily had access to or even wanted to talk about. And uh, so, so I, I started to realize that music's kind of importance uh, in, in, my, in my life uh, and how it played that role in a way. Um, and so and then I started thinking about anybody that sort of had that um, had that relationship with music, you know, and, and how they've said similar things. I don't know where I'd be at without this song or this album or this artist. And, and so the idea struck me to create a video series around that. Um, and, and that's kind of how it all came about. Um, yeah, it's simply uh, to start asking artists to cover a song that impacted them. Um, what song has helped you? Um, and tell me about that time. I, I like the idea that music uh, or that covering a song as opposed to playing something that um, that y- you had written, uh, mostly because I think that everybody has had a connection to a song and not everybody can pick up a, an inch or sit at a piano or pick up a guitar and write a song. Um, and that's how the kind of idea came about. And um, Charlie and I met soon after and, um, my background is not in uh, mental health. Uh, it's in technology. And I mean, obviously now it is in, in mental health and, and music. Technology and music have been my background before. Um, and Charlie, um, Charlie's background is in music and, and mental health. So um, he, he sort of uh, helped the concept, take the concept to the next level. And I'll let Charlie kind of jump in from there, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, just a brief bit of background. Um, I had worked um as a photographer mostly in the music world in the 90s i was like a touring personal photographer for beck for a couple of years and a bunch of other stuff and um and then decided to totally switch gears and go to grad school to become a therapist um and you know as i got established in that started to sort of bring um, art and creativity like back into my approach to mental health and, and doing some um, artwork within psychiatric settings as well. And, um, you know, so when I found Nick, I think we decided it was on Instagram and what he was doing, it was kind of like a full circle experience for me of like so many of the things that I've always, uh, you know, cared about um, and found to be therapeutic um, both in terms of music and then you sort of, connecting it to to mental health so um what we did what nick was alluding to was sort of took it from being um purely like a making a video um idea and and sort of focusing on the music to uh like what how can we use music and its connection to people especially people who sometimes are left behind in the mental health system how can we use the music to get people knowledge um, and and access to resources. Uh, it feels like a totally natural thing. Like the more we do this, the more I feel like, like it's not like a band or an artist here and there that is dealing with mental health in their music. It's like mental health is music. It's like almost <laughs> like it's just, I, I almost have come to see them as sort of inseparable. 
Um, yet like, you know, and myself included, like, and I mean, I was in therapy my whole life, but like, there was a certain element of the people that were like big music fans, like weren't really tapped into like the going to therapy, you know, set. And, uh, and so we just felt like there's a disconnect there. How can we sort of repackage, um, like getting knowledge about mental health and seeing, seeing a therapist in a way that, uh, is, a tr- is attractive and appealing, um, like particularly to like younger people who are like mystified by it. It's like, what, where do you start? What does it mean? What is it? How do you find someone? How do you find the right person? Um, so that's where we're kind of trying to sort of drag the music into the, um, mental health space. Can you share a personal story from one of the captures? I mean, one of the things that jumps out at me, Nick, and I'll let, and I'll let you finish was just the, the one we did with Sharon Van Etten and, 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 you know, cause she talked about part of the reason that she wanted to be involved in the project was because of her connection to fans and like how so many fans will, will come up to her based on her music, but almost like treat her like a therapist in a way with like a confidant, you know, like really tell all, spill it all because it feels so connected through the music and it, that it inspired her to even um, go to grad go to, I don't know if it was grad school or undergrad, but start taking classes towards becoming a counselor, getting a counseling license. Um, and so that was like really inspiring to me as that kind of crossover where the, the two things came together. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. And I'll, I'll, um, the one that always kind of resonate with, resonated with me was, um, I mean, we've done some amazing ones, you know, and, and, and there are, um, you know, a lot of kind of moments where I think people, um, you know, people are sharing, you know, really, you know, intimate things and, and being, amazingly open um and and so they're all incredible um if, if you if you give them a chance um you know they're they're um, they're really impactful um so sharon was great I, I think about the one that we did with william parker who is a um jazz you know avant-garde jazz kind of legend um he invited us into his apartment and um he had you know, instruments from, from all over the, all over the world. Uh, and, um, yeah, he was, he was incredible. And the one thing that, that he said that, um, that stuck with me was, you know, um, music is, music is in everything, you know, it's, it's in everything we do. It's in, you know, the, the trees and in the, um, uh, you know, the Scott, he, he said, it's in my, my grandmother's pie is one of the things he said. And, and I, I love that. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and it's true, you know, you know, and everything that is good in the world, I, I feel like there's a connection to music. Um, and the other thing that he said that resonated and, and you know, I, I don't know that necessarily um, it connects directly to our mission, but I always thought it was a beautiful sentiment. He, he, um, he, he, he mentioned how sometimes when he he's performing and he has this sort of like moment almost in every time he performs where he he's not here and he goes to another place and and it's a dark place but at the end of the hallway is this light and he hangs out in this light and 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 all the answers are in the light and he gets to hang there for a second but when he comes back he doesn't he doesn't have the answers anymore it's just in there it's in the music um and uh, yeah. And that story always stuck with me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just incredible to think about that. And I, you know, I play music uh, a bit myself, but uh, I don't think I've, I've been there. <laughs> well, the other question I have is about how this having formed this nonprofit um, and being you know, met each other and co-founded this. Have you both experienced a marked difference in how you um, manage your own mental health? I mean, for me, like my, most of my work, like prior to doing this, where now it's more balanced was more in working as an individual therapist. So, you know, in a way it feels very similar, but it's, it, it, it's a little bit, freeing from the confines of just like working with an individual in that, in, in that very private space. So it's like, it, it's really, and it takes me out of that role. And then I, I totally do not believe in any kind of a th- sort of authoritative clinician, you know, role. I think it's 
you know, horrible nonsense, but, um, you know, you, you, you do play a role in someone's private life as an individual therapist. And in this role, it's much more sort of freeing and, and gets me back into the things that I was into as a kid in a way. And, and the, the mission, which is backed up in like every artist that we talk to and, and fans and whatever is like that, that there's just so much commonality in what we all go through. And so it's, it, it it's just really, um, and, and my, my daughter has gotten like super into music um, in really a deep way. So it's been, that's been a really valuable experience to sort of be really back in the music world and have her, she's 15, like growing up alongside and discovering a lot of old stuff and new stuff and turning me on to stuff and things like that has been really great. I mean, I just think there's, um, there's just the a basic humanity that's in music that that transcends so much of um all the struggles and things that people have been through or we've all been through in the last batch of years especially in the last year um and it's something that continues to connect um everyone in spite of like the like isolation and it's it's interesting i i did not um i remember the beginning of the pandemic i didn't listen to the very beginning i didn't listen to any music and then and then at some point I, I switched gears on I like to, to nonstop music going all the time. But yeah, for, for me, my um, the thing that has like really kind of changed for me is that <clears throat> when I started this, you know, super grateful for Charlie because he had the background in the, in, in mental health and I sort of jumped into it without basic knowledge. And I think I was always afraid of saying the wrong thing. Um, cause we were, cause people were being, you know, again, completely open. I, you know, I, it was like almost being a therapist to, you know, the people that we were interacting with, you know, including artists, but also people that, you know, heard what we were doing or, or found out about us. <clears throat> and yeah, like I was afraid to say the wrong thing. And it's become clear over the last year or so that there is no wrong, like there's no wrong thing. Right. And I think this is a problem with mental health, you know, the approach to mental health and why it's still a challenge, even though everyone is being more, more and more open these days, you know, I, you hear artists and um, you know, uh, more and more people in um in the world being open about things, but there's still a disconnect between how we approach our day-to-day life. And I think there's something to that. You know, I was always sort of afraid to say the wrong thing. And I've found that there is no wrong thing. If you're, if you're a, um, if you care enough, you're not going to say the wrong thing. And most of the time people want you, you to listen and, and to, to be a, a person that, you know, cares. And that to me was, transformative in in how i approach my 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 life um to think about things that way and not worry so much about saying the wrong thing but but being there thank you so much for being a part of launch left and i'd love for you to just let our listeners and watchers know how can we find you yeah um we're on all social media at uh, sounds of saving um and you can also go to soundsofsaving.org 